Hi everybody, it's been ages since I sat in front of a camera. If you follow me on Twitter you'll know exactly what's going on in my life and if you don't I would probably advise you not to follow me at this point because all you will do is get pissed off by my constant whining about either packing because we're moving in two weeks or talking about my PhD which to be frank nobody cares about but if I can't put it on Twitter where the hell can I put it? So um I've been wanting to film this haul video for ages. What I've decided to do this week is to try and film a video every day so that I have a bit of a stash because it's going to go absolutely crazy off the hook. It's going to go crazy next week. Yeah, I've got a pretty big haul. Um, this is probably the past month and a half. I'm just going to get started. Oh, oh yeah, I did have my hair cut. I have one of those impulsive rages that I have when suddenly my hair just looks awful and I book a next day hair appointment and just go and cut it off and um, the lady blow dried it with a round brush and I looked like a Lego, like I was wearing a Lego helmet. On a side note, in the US do you actually pluralise the word Lego to Legos? I wanted to inquire about that because I think that's totally wrong. When I was a kid I would go play with my Lego, not my Legos, <laughs> which probably to US people or anyone that says the word Legos makes it sound like I was a really, really sad, lonely child with only one Lego block that I would just play with on its own. But um, I'm going to get going because I could just talk forever. So I have a few things. First thing I got was NARS 413 Bleaker eyeshadow, which is a limited edition eyeshadow inspired by the NARS store in New York, I believe. And it didn't come out in stores, it just came out on the internet. And I really wanted it, and I don't know why I wanted it, because I have Lassa, and these two are pretty similar, actually. But for some reason, I just really wanted 413 Bleaker. And um, I refused to pay £6 shipping for an eyeshadow. I mean, look at this thing. It's tiny, and Nars want to charge me £6 for shipping, which I think is absolutely obscene and ridiculous, and Nars really need to sort that out. So, um, a group of us on Twitter clubbed together, and, you know, we got free shipping on the Nars, which I believe in internet parlance is called hashtag winning. We won at the internet. But we all got our hands on Nars 413 Bleaker, and it's beautiful. The thing is, it's pretty similar to Lassa. I'm going to show you Lassa. So this is Lassa, it's a bit more brown, and this is 413 Bleaker, which is a bit more grey. If you force me to pick, I'd probably say Lassa because it's permanent. Do you need both? Uh, no. So that is that. And then um, I did get my first ever Rouge Bunny Rouge haul. Um, I was watching Seth Aiken 7, who's like the god of Rouge Bunny Rouge. He has beautiful products, he has beautiful swatches and it feels like he was taunting me because he had so many beautiful things. I'm going to link it below but um, he did a spring blushes video. In the video he mentioned that Zunetta.com were having a 20% off code so I thought okay Rouge Bunny Rouge is horrendously expensive let's just try the 20% off code. So I got three things. The first thing I got was a blush wand, and this is in Vermeer, and I love the colour. It's like this beautiful kind of pinkish peach, it's just really pretty, and it does go on quite sheer, actually. It, I would liken it, if anyone's ever tried the NARS multiple tint tubes, this is kind of similar, except it's a creamy, not a jelly kind of look. But... Um, I do really like this, I really like the colour, however the blush has a kind of sticky texture which I'm not really sold on. I really like the product and the packaging is just cute, but I'm not as wowed as I wanted to be by Rouge Bunny Rouge. I think I just ordered the wrong products, in a way. I didn't order, I didn't get the eyeshadow that everyone raves about, I didn't get the powder blushes, I got the things that I fancied and I wasn't really blown away. So I got two lipsticks, one is in Word of Mouth and it's a colour burst lipstick. I think it's described as the little black dress of lipsticks. It's a cool cherry syrup according to their website. This is not as pigmented as I thought it was going to be and the stain power isn't particularly good. But I do like the colour, it's a really nice muted red. And then I got Dissolved in Dreams Sheer Lipstick. This is, um, I've been really after that kind of glossy uh, look for my lips recently so 
this was a no-brainer for me. I, I was thinking it was going to be watermelon like it was described on the website, but it's more orangey than that. However, it is really, really pretty, but the pigmentation is on a par with the Colourburst lipstick, so, huh. Um, that said, these lipsticks are really, really moisturising, not a hint of dryness at all. Really, really good for that, but overall, I'm not really like, oh my god, must buy more. I am happy with what I've got, and I'm not sure I'll be indulging again anytime soon. So, moving swiftly on, I did have a bit of help grabbing some Tarte blushes. You know who you are, and uh, you've already seen these. If you've watched my other videos, you've probably already seen these anyway. But I have Doll Face, which is this kind of... On me, it comes up a really kind of warm, almost corally pink, which I think is really gorgeous. But on, I remember, I think I remember Tim Talia saying it came up as a cool pink on her, so I guess it really, really depends on your skin tone. But I really love this this spring, I think it's absolutely gorgeous, I think the pigmentation is lovely, it's really, really finely milled, really easy to blend. I think these are really good blushes. I couldn't hold to the 12 hour claim though, because I don't really tend, <laughs> there's a point in the day where I just stop looking at my face. You know, like, I just stop wanting to know what, what the horror is that is on my face. So I just kind of avoid mirrors after, like, 6 o'clock when I know that I'm a greaseball. The next one is Exposed. And this is a warm tan. It's kind of one of those sculpting, model in a compact kind of blushes. It's quite similar to Douceur, but... It's darker, it's more pigmented, so I have to use a bit more of a light hand. But it's one of those blushes that goes with everything. And I would never in a million years have picked this colour out on a stand. I would never say, oh, I really fancy that kind of brown blush. But it works. It really works. Also managed to get my hands on some beautiful uh, Maybelline Colour Tattoo eyeshadows. This one is tough as taupe. And it's... It's kind of like MAC Copperplate eyeshadow in a cream eyeshadow format. Format? Form, actually. And then, um, back to the bronze, which is this lovely bronzy colour. This actually reminds me of NARS Fez eyeshadow. It's a really beautiful, slightly murky bronze. And I was kind of scared at it at first, but it blends out really nicely to give you this kind of sheer wash of colour over the lid. I might I add, the staying power on these is really, really good. So I'm pretty impressed with these. I would say if they would, if they have a good nude shade, something like Painterly, then I would probably give up Mac Painterly and just go straight to those. Really that loyal to Painterly, so you know, if another sexy new contender comes on the scene that's cheaper, then you know, bye bye Mac. I have been really gravitating towards brands like NARS and Laura Mercier recently, kind of respecting their aesthetic of lovely, nice, classic makeup. I don't really need a chalky blue eyeshadow from MAC or like a badly form another badly formulated collection. MAC just pissed me off basically. I just I have no interest in anything that they're doing right now. So I have been really interested in high-end brands like NARS and Laura Mercier that deliver on quality and pretty products. And um, this purchase is dedicated to the wonderful Rachel from Makeup Never Sleeps, who I discovered in the last month and a half, I would say. And if you're not subscribed to her, she's freaking hilarious. Just her, there are, only, there are very few people that actually just make me laugh out loud. And I tend to watch YouTube videos when doing my makeup, so it's pretty dangerous. So whenever I'm watching Denise and Makeup, or Rachel from Makeup Never Sleeps, I'm in serious danger of smearing my eyeliner all the way up to my eyebrow because I would just crack up. So she's one of those people that just completely cracks me up. I can't help it. So um, anyway, she did this amazing tutorial using the new Laura Mercier products back in December, and it's a caviar stick. If you remember the grease paint sticks from MAC, they were really awesome kind of cream stick products that um, they took a bit of warming up and they were a little bit hard to blend. And so if you love those, you will love this. This is amazing. It's the most, it's the most butteriest, that's really good English, it's the butteriest, softest, loveliest cream eyeshadow thing I've ever used. I needed the colour Amethyst, which is kind of like a cool bronze with bronze shimmer in it. It's absolutely beautiful. Um, 
and the staying power on these is amazing they're just fantastic products it's I'm gonna need some more of these I think these are gonna get a lot of love love from me my lovely friend Susie from the channel Dotilicious she's like my first YouTube buddy like we go way back um, she's the loveliest girl ever um, you should go subscribe to her actually I, I love her to pieces but um, she was watching one of my videos where I was talking about my Catrice lipstick being discontinued and I was really upset about it so she sneakily sent me a surprise package um, sending me one of their new lines to try out so that was ridiculously sweet of her it smells like sherbet which is kind of really addictive because when I put this on I spent ages going like that like a cow curling my lips up to, to smell it because it smells so good to me but it's this kind it's called pink me up and it's this kind of cherries in the snow type color really really bright pinky red really beautiful pigmentation is great the it's not drying it lasts really well she also sent me to try um one of these Catrice made to stay long lasting shadows and these are pretty good but my favourite thing about this whole product is the name and I feel like Susie knew when she picked it out for me that it wasn't the colour like she didn't, I don't know if she particularly picked it out because it was the colour that it is but I think she might have picked it out for the name which is um, Lord of the Blings which I spent a whole childhood um, my raptly listening to my dad read me Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit every single night and I absolutely adore I, I'm just a bit of a geek so um, I love this this is a gold eyeshadow but it's not really a bright gold it's more of like kind of like a muted gold when I swatch it it really reminds me of Max Blonde's gold pigment it's just a really beautiful cream eyeshadow it really lasts really nicely as well so that is all of my beauty stuff and I'm going to get going to the clothes. If you don't like clothes, then feel free to go away, <laughs> I guess. had one of those weird months this month, or this month and a half, where I had this weird compulsion to just buy clothes. I was having a style crisis, I think. One of the things I got was a new purse, and I really wanted something in the style of the Mew Mew purses, you know, just a classic plain zip wallet, zip around, um, rectangular leather and I didn't really care what colour. I eventually found this one on the John Lewis website. I love it. Um, the fact that it's black is a coincidence. Everything in my wardrobe is black anyway. So um, it just has this little kooky message on the front which says it's the in it's what's inside that counts and then it has loads of space for my not much money. So I really really love that. Next thing I bought some boots and these were horribly expensive from Kurt, Kurt Geiger and actually I don't really like Kurt Geiger shoes because I find them very uncomfortable and poorly made and overpriced and these were overpriced but I had a crisis, I didn't want to wear my cowboy boots anymore. So these are those, these are those, that sounds weird. Um, I love the diagonal zip, I love how it's exposed, um, the leather is really really soft, they actually look really beaten up but I only got them about three weeks ago, I've just worn them non-stop, wore them out of the box, no blisters, the most comfortable thing I've ever had, seriously just, I, I love these and the heel isn't too high as well but it gives me a bit of height so I don't look like a stumpy hobbit which is what I look like most of the time anyway. Um, in fact, Kiri comes home a lot and when I'm in my uh, nasty looking Ugg fake slippers that I wear in the house, he always tells me, Kiri, you look really short. Like, he's surprised. I'm five foot one. Of course I'm short. Um, <laughs> but these give me a little bit of height and they look great with skinny jeans. I really love these. I bought loads of clothes this month, which is really, really not typical of some... I just don't shop for clothes because... I hate everything. I am the fussiest person. There cannot be lace, there cannot be beading, there cannot be ruching, there cannot be... And even if a garment looks perfect, I will find something wrong with it. I I am just really fussy about clothes. I really don't envy Kiwi when he comes clothes shopping with me. However, I went to Zara, I zoomed myself out physically, so you can see, and I bought this little sheer black top with a little pizza collar. I really think this is very very cute. I didn't even try this on, I just saw it on a rack and then went straight to the till with it. And it's so unlike my style, but every time I wear this I get heaps of compliments from Kiwi. It's like he, he gets like verbal diarrhea of complimenting me and it's like it gets to the point where I'm like no 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 stop complimenting me now, it's, it's not right. <laughs> but, 
Um, I just think it's super cute. The next thing I got was something quite similar from also from Zara, but from I don't know if this is their teenage line. I don't know. TRF seems to be like their more youthful line, but it's similar to kind of top. It's a bit more floaty, so we'll see how that looks. But most importantly, it's not black. I tend to wear a lot of black, so for me to not wear black is. Uh, Quite impressive. Next I went to Topshop and I grabbed um, two of these, uh, one navy blue and one white. The navy blue one's in the wash so I'm not going to show it to you because I spilt most of my lunch down it and I don't want you to know the truth that I am actually just an overgrown toddler. So this is just a white, it looks like a pyjama shirt, quite sheer, quite easy to wear. The most important thing is it only has one boob pocket boob pockets are a problem. They, if I, there are two, they make my boobs look like this huge long boob sausage in the middle of my chest and that's just really, really unattractive and I am so envious of people that can wear those beautiful shirts with two boob pockets but I am limited to one or none. So for me, one boob pocket makes me happy. That, that is a, that's a done deal in my opinion. I picked up this little navy blue dress. It's from a concession at Topshop called Wall G. And it's just navy blue with a little coral stripe at the waist and then a little white and coral stripe at the bottom. Kind of reminds me of a tennis dress and I'm not really sure why. I just thought it was really cute and it's really cute on. I'm a sucker for a scoop neck. I love, love a good scoop neck me. Um, so I just put it on and I just thought, yeah, yeah, I like that. And I'm not really sure why and I'm not even sure when I'm going to wear it, but I liked it. So, yeah, that was everything. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and have a lovely day. And I, I really did miss YouTube, actually. YouTube is one of those kind of good things about the internet. It's like one of the only good things apart from cat photos. I love cat photos. But um, YouTube is one of those things I love doing and it kind of killed me a little bit to not be able to upload for so long. So, um, yeah, I should be back fairly soonish with another video, but uh, don't hold your breath because otherwise you might just pass out and die. So, um, bye.